Hey everyone, welcome to Coffee with Carrie live today on 9-11. thought I would jump on and just kind of check in with everyone. I know that today I think is a day that impacted the world, not just our country. And a lot of folks reflect back on where they were. Where were you when the towers were attacked? Where were you when the planes came down? Where were you in that big moment in history? Um, and I think, you know, like the whole day, that song, Where Were You, spins through my head all day long today, every year. Hey, everybody. Good morning. Welcome. Well, I guess afternoon now where I am. Uh, the day has flown by here. So I wanted to just reflect back on where I was. Because where I was on 9-11 was a huge part of me and in this profession. Um, I was in mortuary school. So this was a morning we were taking exams and we were getting ready to graduate. Graduation was a few days away and we were at school early that morning, me and my classmates, and we were taking final exams. We were in one exam when the first plane hit the first tower. We'd all come out of the exam and there was people talking, like something was going on and people were talking about things and we didn't really know like a lot of people, what was going on? It was news, but we didn't know what the news quite was. And um, Corey and I had walked down to the office to talk to them about some things. We were class officers and we were talking about something we wanted to do with some class money, I guess. And we talked to one of the reception ladies and they said, a plane just hit one of the buildings. And I said, okay, I don't know if many of you remember this story. Hey, Robert Flower. Um, but this, like shortly before this all this day, a boy had been riding his little plane through a city somewhere. I always forget I need to look up this story. And he had ran his little plane into a building. So when they said someone ran a plane into a building, that's all I thought was, oh, it was another kid or it was another person. And one of these little, you know, one person planes ran into a building again. And that's all I thought. So we made our way back down to the student lounge. And when we walked in, everybody, kind of the gravity of what was going on hit us. And then shortly after the second plane hit the second building, and as most of the world, we were in shock. We didn't, you can't quite process what that information is in the, the magnitude of what is happening there. Um, we then had to go back into our second exam. And so our teacher will still reflect back on that, that looking out at us and looking at our faces and trying to take an exam while also inputting all the information of what was just happening. I don't, I don't remember really taking the exam. I remember going back out to the other room and it was like, do we call our parents? Do we call people? It wasn't, we didn't have cell phones as readily back then. Like I had one little cell phone that was for emergencies when I drove back and forth from Michigan to Ohio. And so I didn't even think to go call my parents. Like, is this that big a deal to call my parents? Like, I didn't know what was going on. Um, I just thought, okay, I need to go about my day. I need to go to work later. And I went home after a while and ready to go into work. And I remember the drive into work. The roads were pretty empty and there were police cars all over the place. There was police cars just everywhere. I think because so many people talked about rioting and guns and there was all this talk about, I don't, I don't know, just stuff going that, that there may be something coming that, you know, maybe cities were going to rise up or something, or we were getting ready for another attack in all the cities. And I got to work and I worked at Bass Pro Shop and the gun department was on serious lockdown. It was crazy. Oh, and gas station prices were like off the charts. People were filling up gas, their cars with gas and cans with gas and the prices. Do you guys remember how high the prices shot as gas stations were expecting that we were never going to get gas again. Um, and then the lawsuits after and people getting in trouble for price gouging and stuff. Do you remember all that happening? So, but then work shut down, we got sent home. And I remember talking to my parents on the phone, but I don't remember our conversation at all. And I, 
now looking back, like I probably should have been more scared than maybe I was in the moment or more sad to be away from my family during that and how my parents must have felt not having their kids with them. I feel like something of that magnitude, you would want your to hold your family and keep them safe and have them with you. I know that if my kids were at school, I would probably want to go to them and bring them home and keep them safe with me if something like that was happening, um, just to know they were there. It was really um, a moment I don't think I, I realized the magnitude at all. I mean, how can we? How can we understand what that was like? Um, I know now, like thinking about it in terms of this year and um, the deaths. And I know back then I thought, man, I wish I could go and I could help and I could, you know, be part of taking care of all these individuals because the funeral homes, I can't imagine being a funeral director in the city during that time and what that must have been like. And I know volunteers went and um, the DMORT teams were all deployed and, you know, finding the deceased and kind of processing them through and notifying families and having funerals and all these things that so many people had to go and volunteer their time to do and, and to be part of. And I think that would have been amazing to get to help with, but I didn't have, I don't think the knowledge at that time to be able to assist and really help. Um, we're now looking at, um, you know, they had the pandemic and we had this situation in our country this year. And, you know, I know students who went and helped and just helped move individuals around and helped with kind of the rise in death during those few weeks that were so, so critical. Um, and that I wish I would have gone and helped and just gone and volunteered and gone and done what I could. So, um, but every year we're taken back to that moment and taken back to that time and I've not gone and visited. How many of you have visited the um, Twin Tower site and then the site where the other plane came down um, out in the field? And my brother went to that um, memorial last year and he said that was one of the most powerful places to visit and go through that memorial. So that is on a bucket list that I go and I I take part in those moments and in those memorials because I think that's important for our history and important in my lifetime to kind of partake in that. Yeah, Robert Bertram, like I'm, yeah, there's, if you want to come and say something crappy about 9-11, um, take it away from here. Yeah, there's no place for that. Today's not a day for that. Um, you know, I just, I won't let, that day be overshadowed and everything that the lives that were given by first responders, police officers, firemen and women and people that day, there's, there's no putting that down. Sorry, not happening. <laughs> um, you guys are sharing stories, read each other's stories, all the places that we were that day. Um, I know there was a recent video um, from the bombing or not the, the explosion that happened overseas. And a woman was giving birth when the explosion happened and her husband was holding a camera and caught this explosion happening and shaking the building and debris just being blown in and the bed being blown over and the hospital staff, the doctors and nurses being injured and still going over to this woman. Hey Vic, just to, um, I have not taken care of any famous murder case. Well, yeah, nothing that I guess you would be considered famous. Like there was a People article, People magazine article about somebody, but um, I don't know if that considers them famous or not. Um, but that video, so the nurses and the doctors went to the woman and still helped her give birth just after this. So thinking that, at that moment, there's people that were having babies in hospitals in downtown New York City. And hearing a story maybe from somebody that was giving birth, like life was coming in as life was going out like that. I don't know, that, ir that horrible irony of it is just crazy to think about. Yeah, people who are never even born during this that now are old enough to understand the gravity of it. 
to hear those stories because a lot of people, you know, hearing of JFK's assassination, all these big moments. Um, I'd like to do a video, I think, capturing some interviews with people talking about these big pivotal moments in our history and in things like the Challenger exploding. And thinking back on that was during my lifetime. Um, but there's a lot of people who have, you know, they didn't partake in that at all. It's just a story. It's just a moment in somebody else's history. That's part of the history of the world. Do you know what I mean? Like that is part of my history because I lived during it. But if you didn't live during it, it's just a story, a story you hear, a story you're told without emotions on it. Vic, yes, I have a Patreon that just started this week. Um, so it's carry the mortician is the Patreon page and there's three different levels you can jump in on. So check that out. Yeah, Trevor, I can't imagine being a small child during 9-11 and seeing it and not understanding at all what was going on and how confusing that had to be as a child watching that. Oh, Linda, you watched President Bush's plane, uh, Air Force One, fly over. Yeah, the patriotism that erupted around the country. I think a lot of people talk about, like, we need to get back to that unity moment because we've become broken in a lot of ways as a country and, and a lot of things over the last year, it, which is really sad. So maybe on this day, we can at least be unified a little bit. Um, they didn't think it actually happened. Wow. Yeah, that's crazy, JW. That's crazy. So share your stories, everyone, and connect with somebody. Um, we all have stories of what happened during that. Some people it impacted far more than others, that people lost people in the towers and in things that transpired after, you know, people that are still responders that are impacted by health things um, from the, that day and from the cleanup in the days after and such. So it's not just that day that impacted, it's the trickle effect of everything that transpired after. So um, thank you guys. Thank you for joining and supporting and listening to my little story of what happened that day. But I want to hear your stories. They're so important um, to know and to hear so maybe we can connect with a funeral director that was, you know, in it um, during that time. And, and could you maybe share some stories of everything that transpired? So thank you guys. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.